Praise God. Hallelujah. A little louder. Don't mess up my hearing aid. No. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now, God is so good. Amen. This morning as we, you know, we come to church, amen, and we all love God, right? But sometimes it, we come to church with doubt and unbelief, amen, and I don't know if you guys know where I'm headed to. I'm headed to the tithes and offerings that we take, amen? We come thinking that uh, we can't even get to church and we have no gas, uh, because we uh, we gotta pay this bill, we can't put gas, or or we can't eat because uh, we didn't put gas, whatever, right? But the Bible talks about being obedient to God, amen. And one of his, one of the things He wants us to be obedient is in our giving, amen. Giving it is so important. I mean, and, I, and I've shared this before that I've been without and I've been blessed, amen. Look at me, I eat good still, you know. I still drive my truck that uses a lot of gas, you know, and I'm, I'm still being blessed, amen? 
So, is there blessings in giving? Yes, there is. There's blessings. And we need to just take it and run with it. Because God wants to bless you. He doesn't have to bless you, but He wants to bless you. He wants to bless your obedience. Amen? The Bible talks about bringing your tithes. You know, 10%. Amen? You know, I remember uh, growing up in, in the church. I grew up as an altar boy. And a 10%, when they said diezmos in Spanish, and ten, uh, tithing, I didn't know what tithing was. I was never taught. I didn't know it was 10%. They just said they're diezmos, but I didn't know it was 10%, right? So I would just give a dollar out of whatever we made or whatever, right? And it was just a habit, just giving a dollar, giving a dollar. Until I finally learned that as a Christian, tithing means 10% of what you make. What you bring home. Back in the days, they brought food and they brought grains and they brought even animals. Uh, they're part of their, their giving of the tithe. Amen. And I believe that God wants us to be blessed. But we have to do our part. Amen. You know, we, we can say, I think Pastor mentioned this a couple weeks ago. We can say, oh, we need it for this and we need it for that. But God knows what we need it for. Right? He does. He knows everything what we need. Amen. Amen. And He knows what you need. Amen. He, needs, he knows what you need. So this morning, as as we prepare, as the ushers go around, or we have envelopes for our tithing. Um, you need one? Just raise your hand. How many is blessed? I want to see your hand. Give right. them all envelopes. All envelopes. Right. Everybody gets an envelope. They raise their hand. You know? Everybody gets one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, believe. Amen. Believe that when you give, it's going to the good use, amen? It's not going to pastor's Cadillac, Lamborghini, his, his jet airplane, it's not going to that, you know? Because he doesn't have one, <laughs> you know? Maybe he has it in a Hot Wheel, but not in a grill, you know? And if you know our pastor, and a lot of you, you do know him, he's not like that. He's not gonna spend foolishly. You know what, this morning, amen, when I found out that the electrician's putting electricity in our classroom, that's exciting. We're going to have electricity, amen? We're going to have another classroom. Because what's going to happen? God's going to expand. God's going to move in this place. People are, we might have to have two, three services. Who knows? But we need more room for our kids, amen? And God's just going to bless it, amen? But let's, let's do our part, amen? Let's, let's see what, you know, when people say you need to challenge God or just not challenge God, just let God be God. And let him just let him do his part, amen? Because he will, as we do our part, amen? So, let us pray, amen? Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for just everything, God. And we know, God, that we cannot thank you enough for what you've done, God. I pray this morning that you will bless his tithes and offerings, God. Father, that you will rich you bless your people, Father, spiritually. Father, that you will bless them, Father God, financially. Physically, Lord God, I pray that every need and every home will be met, Lord God. I pray that you'll not only provide for us here, but for those who are online, who are listening, and to those that, Father, they have needs out in this world, God, because there is so much need right now, Lord. Father, we know that you own the, the, all the hills and all the cattle on the hill, Lord. And that we know that you're able to provide, Lord. We just want your will to be done this morning, God, in the lives of your people, Father. We thank you, God, this morning, in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say amen. As a basketball round, feel free. You know, uh, back in the day, the church I used to go to, it was called Praise Chapel, right? And I'm not promoting Praise Chapel. Somebody got up there one time and was taking up an offering. They said, just act like you're putting money in there. And he goes, and they said, it's by faith. We're believing. It's by faith. If you don't have it now, just act. So when that day comes, when you have that money, you're able to put it in easy. Amen? So we need to believe. Amen? That, you know, when we, we do that, we're trusting that we're going to have put offerings one day. Amen? Hallelujah. But as we go on, we're going to have our, our announcements. Announcements. Oh, prayer night. Don't forget prayer nights on Mondays. Um, we started at 6 to 7 because after prayer is our disciple classes. So I want to encourage you guys to come out and pray. I was listening to a message the other day and it's saying, a church that prays can go a long way. A house that prays can do 
great things. Amen. Amen. A person that prays can touch this world. Amen. Amen. And I believe that you can touch this world through prayer. Amen. God will use you in a mighty way. You know, just be open. Amen. Let God use you. But prayer is very important. That's our lifeline. You know, that, that keeps us going throughout the day. You know, sometimes we get up and we don't pray or, or we're so, so in a hurry that we don't pray. But when we do pray, it makes our day much nicer and easier. You know? Amen. So don't forget a prayer night. Midweek Bible study. Amen. Our Wednesday night Bible study has been pretty good. Uh, uh, a lot of encouraging, a lot of growth. Amen. Uh, maturity is coming out of this. Amen. Because we're starting to learn. Uh, sometimes we don't understand what we read. But when we come to a Bible study in midweek service, we have a better understanding, amen, because Pastor breaks it down, or whoever's teaching that night breaks it down for us to understand, and we're able to lift our hands and ask questions, amen, and that's a great thing. Because sometimes we have that mic going all over the place, you know, but they're asking the questions is the best thing to do, is ask questions. There's a saying that no dumb question, how does it go? There's no question that is that you ask that is dumb or something, I couldn't remember that. <laughs> That's it, Marco. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This is going to be exciting. Amen. We're going to have worship night on 420. Amen. Uh, we have MC Boulevard. Amen. I haven't heard him in a long time. I think the last time I heard him was a uh, Low Rider show. <laughs> I think. Right. I don't remember. But um, uh, here's our guest. He's going to be here on Saturday, the 20th, uh, from 5. 5 p.m. to whatever the Lord wants us to stop. Amen. Amen. Not a long night of coming out from the church the next day. Right? But yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be food. There's going to be uh, sodas, water. I would say beverage, but then people might think different, you know? So it's going to be good things. Amen. Happening that night. I mean, God's going to move. Amen. Also, this is the best part. Fishing. Amen. Yeah. We're going to be fishing, man. How many men we got here? Yeah, how many men like to fish? Ladies, put your hands down. Come on, ladies. How many men like to fish, really? We're going to be having our, our fishing trip, our men's uh, fellowship at um, Red Inns, amen? It's called Fisherman Retreat. I think it's $16 to go in. You don't need a license. And there's two lakes, amen? So um, if you want to come by and be a part of that, be uh, um, in fellowship with us, Come on, if you want to just come and barbecue for us, that's even good too, you know? Maybe we'll cook the fish we don't catch. <laughs> awesome. And the best place, you know, when I go fishing, I like to go to Stater Brothers because I can, I'm can. i guaranteed I'm going to catch something, you know? I'll buy me a fish, amen? Silver so, spoon. Silver spoon. Yes, silver spoon. But yeah, come on by. Be a part of this, man. You bring your sons. Uh, uh, I was given a whole bunch of fishing poles uh, of last month, I think, and now... Uh, I'm willing to give those out for you guys to take them, you know? Because I have too many. My wife thinks I'm going crazy now. You know, all these fishing poles all over the place, you know? But uh, all they do, all they need is to be restringed. So if somebody could help me restring them, we could start restringing them, amen? Uh, but we want to bless you guys. We want to have a good time that day. Come, fellowship. Uh, wife, sorry, that day is ours, you know? So we go enjoy ourselves, man. So be a part of that. If you have any questions, you can see me or Brother Daniel. Don't forget our conference, uh, Living Word Conference. is going to be on the 17th to the 20th. Uh, prepare. I also got church out. I was talking to somebody earlier, and, I, and, it, and we know the time is so short. So everything we feed, get fed, and the Word of God, take heed to it. Because we have no time to waste. We got no... no um, you know, we got to just take in everything we learn and draw closer to God. Amen. Because uh, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And all he wants to do is to distract you, destroy you, steal you. Amen. And I believe this conference will do great things in your lives. Amen. So I want to encourage you guys to come out and be a part of this conference. It's going to be at the Ontario Convention. Um, there's no registration to say, but um, yeah, come out and be a part of it. Amen. I, I don't think my pastor is preaching that day, but. Be ready. Maybe he will be. Uh, living Word Cleaning. Amen. We also have uh, our cleaning crew on the 27th. Also going to be here cleaning. So if you want to be a part of that, um, there won't be no men to help you guys. But yeah, uh, ladies, if you want to help out, it'll be good. Help me out. Uh, Discord. We also have Discord. 
this is an information information of, to help you guys. Uh, there's a resource. Uh, people might put, post a job. People might be putting dogs for sale. People might, you know, be just just inf information to the church what's taking place. Uh, classes, uh, main chat, you know, where where we can talk together and not somebody come and throw some junk on there, you know. So as a church, we use this a lot, and it's good information to have. Other than that, I think that's it. Discord. If you need help with that, you could ask uh, brother, uh, Sister Christina, Brother Daniel, or, or one of the other uh, members of the church can help you with that. But get connected. Get connected, because this is the way it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you guys to be informed of what's taking place. Amen. But this morning, amen, we want to give God all the glory and honor. Amen. Our pastor's out there. He's preaching at uh, San Isidro. Uh, pray for him. Amen. Pray for him. Pray that God would bless them, use them, anoint them, that God would just, he would just have fun preaching, amen? They're preaching the word of God, amen? But we have a, a guest this morning, a, a very special guest, amen? A brother that, that we all love, amen? A brother that we, you know, it doesn't matter what he's going through, he's still showing joy, amen? And I appreciate this, brother. So why don't we give our, a clap offering for our brother Bento? They said he looks like me. Is that true? <laughs> amen, amen. God bless you guys. Welcome to Living Word. You guys ready for the word? Alright, I'm uh I'm gonna I'm let you guys know something real quick. So I don't have a Bible, you know, I didn't bring a Bible because um, I used to go to the studio all the time and bring papers and notes and I will be uh, recording my verse and I'm trying to read the paper with a flashlight in the studio. So uh, so I was thinking like, man, they showed me how to use the phone and do notes on the phone. So now I do my lyrics through the phone. So I did my sermon on the phone. So I hope you guys don't stone me because of that. Because the word of God, I'm going to tell you what, it doesn't matter if you, uh, sister, can you turn me up a little bit, please? Uh, it doesn't matter if you have, if you have a, a Bible in your, in your dashboard and you think that's going to protect you, or it doesn't matter if you have it in your heart and you know the scripture, it doesn't matter. What matters is if you apply it to your life. Yeah. When you apply it to your life, that's what matters. So... 20 Bibles, Bibles all around their house. I, I knew somebody said, oh yeah, I got a Bible in this room, that room, that room, so I'm protected. I like, do you have it in your, in your, in your, in your heart and do you apply it to yourself? Because some people can quote 20 scriptures, 30 scriptures and, uh, and, and they don't even live it. You know, so, um, so don't stone me because of this. <laughs> but amen. Alright, so uh, first and foremost, we're going to pray, right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father God, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. I want to thank my pastors, Father God, for giving me this opportunity. I, I thank you, Lord, because it was you that put it in their hearts, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in this church, the growth that is happening, Father God, the, 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 the people that are being set free, delivered, people that are being healed, Father God, people that walk out of these doors different, Father God, that we will have a, a renew our minds, Father God, because of your Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for, for your presence. Father God, for what you're doing, Lord, at this moment, Father God, I pray that the unction of the Holy Spirit be upon my lips, take over my mind, my heart, and my thoughts, and that you would speak, Holy Spirit, not me, Father God. Remove me out of the way, Father God, and let your word pierce us. Let it, let, it, let it convict us, Father God, so that we can surrender to you, Father God, so that we can come with open arms, Father God, surrendering, Lord, humbling ourselves. And, and, and just bowing to you, Father God, because you are the only one. You are the one that's in control of everything, Father God. You can do everything, and everything is under your command, Father God. All authority has been, been given to you within heaven and earth. 
And you already know our beginning and our end, Father God. So I pray, Lord, that today we will be able to receive, Father God. Let your spirit move today, Father God. Let it be revival today, Father God. I come against every demonic force, every unclean spirit. We put you on notice today. Because today you have to leave every spirit of doubt, of unbelief. Every spirit that tries to attack or distract, we command you to leave this place. Lack of faith, we command you to leave this place. We bind you in the mighty name of Jesus and command you to leave out of here in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you open up eyes, that you open up ears so that they can receive what you're saying, Lord, that we will all learn, Father God, and receive from you because I need it as bad, Father God, than anyone here, Lord. I need it as bad as anybody, Father God. We need of you, Lord. We can't do nothing without you, but we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to be with you right here, to receive from you, Lord, and to grow with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. So today we're going to talk about the Great Commission. How many of you know about the Great Commission? Let me see those hands. You guys know the Great Commission? All right, cool. All right, so um, that's good because not all of us know. Not all of us know about the Great Commission. And uh, we just had uh, the resurrection of Christ, you know. But what happened after? You know, what happened after? He came back. And um, he came back, and uh, he 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 was seen by a lot of people. There was a lot of witnesses that seen him. It's, it's recorded not only in the Bible, but it's recorded in history. There's even Romans that have nothing to do with with Christianity that they seen and they know and they they noted it up. It's it's written in history that uh, that they saw Jesus come back. That they saw him alive. You know, after death, there was 500 witnesses, disciples, many more. You know, but Jesus told them to go to the to the mountain and meet up with them before he descended to heaven, and he gave them a command. And sometimes we're like, well, what's a command? Well, well, a command is you go to work, right? So if your boss tells you to do something, you gonna do it, right? Because if you don't do it, then you don't get paid, right? Well, if Jesus said to do it, then do it. Because if not, you ain't going to get in the kingdom, right? So what are we supposed to do? We got to obey the Lord, right? All right, cool. So I'm going to read the scripture. So the scripture is in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. If any one of you want to go there, I'll give you a couple seconds to get there. So you guys can go there. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it reads, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubt. You know, there's always going to be somebody doubting. And we have to encourage those people that are doubting. We have to... Uh, Pray with them, uh, uh, speak with them, testify to them, because uh, we all have our uh, testimonies, and uh, nobody can take that from you. And it says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe." All things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So if you don't know what lo means, it means look and see. You know? But uh, God gave them a command. You know, he gave them a command so that we can go and make disciples. We have to make disciples. This is about making disciples. You guys are being discipled right now because you guys are hearing the word of God and I'm going to explain what the Lord tells me, how he needs me to break it down. But we are all disciples. We're all learning. We're all growing. 
We're not in the same place. We're not in the same level. Some of us can just got saved last week. And some of them can be here for 20 years. And maybe the one that just got saved last week is growing so fast that got a lot more than the, than the person that's been here for 20 years. But it's not for anybody to point finger, I'm doing better than you, all of this and that. No, it's for us to encourage. If you see somebody that's growing and they need, then you go and help them and you teach them. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Teach them, right? But uh, before we talk about this scripture and this command, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Because he said something in the scripture. He said, go, he said, go and teach them what I have taught you. So what Jesus taught us. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to find out what Jesus taught us and his examples so that we can be able to understand, okay, this is what Jesus wants us to do. This is what the, this is what he wants us to teach. And, 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 and these are the examples that he left so we can follow his examples. And now we can make disciples and teach them. Because if I tell you the scripture, oh yeah, go and do this and, and teach all nations what Jesus has taught you and you don't know what Jesus taught or what he did, then what are you going to tell them? We have to have some kind of knowledge, right? We have to know something, okay, who was Jesus? So now we want to know who was Jesus, right? Yeah. All right, so it says, this is a command that we should desire to do naturally. When we're saved, how do you think the disciples took it? Look at the bride now. They put in work. We're everywhere now, right? We're everywhere now. Like, look at look at the disciples, how much work they put in. Because when they got saved, they were radical for God. They were ready to die. They were ready to go around the world and do whatever they got to do, you know? So it says, um, so it says, look at the bride now. This is not scripture, this is me. Uh, not me, the Holy Spirit gave me this when I was putting it together. So this is what it is. But not done, but but not done. We should care for for every last soul. It don't matter how evil or demonized they are, because some of us were and some of us still are. Can you turn it down a little bit, sister? Just a little bit so that feedback won't be in there. Thank you. Um because some of us were and some of us still are. You see, God is going to separate us like sheep from the goats, like wheat and tear. So you know what we need to do? We need to stop playing. We need to stop playing with God. You know, because some of us are half in, half out, and I get it if you just got saved, but you got to ask God to help you through that. You got to ask him to give you the strength to overcome your desires. You got to die to yourself. Amen. You don't have to go up in the liquor store if, if, if that's your if that's your temptation. Or you don't got to go sleep around if that's your temptation. Amen. Whatever it is. Or you don't have to go gossip if that's your temptation. Or maybe gluttony if that's your temptation. Because I know I've been learning a lot about, about uh, the desire of hunger. You know, and how it's like the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. When we look at a cheese, if you're fasting and you look at a cheeseburger or smell it, you could almost taste it. You could almost, your mouth gets watery. You're like, man, like, how could my flesh have so much power over me that it wants it so bad? And I really want to do that, you know? But the thing is this, the devil's going to destroy you one way or another. And I look at it like this. If I start watching what I eat right now, then God's going to let bless me, maybe, it's on his will, with another 10 years. You know, those extra 10 years, I could, I could minister to my grandkids. I want to see my grandkids saved. I want to see my family saved. I want to preach the gospel a little bit longer. If, if me stop eating a cheeseburger is going to give me one day more, then guess what? I'll just stop because in that one day, I might win 20 souls. Amen? That's what we need to think. We need to think about it. The enemy is trying to destroy us and he can destroy you inside you. You won't even know. It creeps up on you. You know, in your marriage, in your household, in your church, in your job. Temptation's everywhere. You know? But 
God is a God that is faithful. And if his word said that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, then you can do it. But you have to humble yourself and be obedient to him and put everything aside and walk as holy as possible. Not perfect, but when you fall, then you get back up and you repent. In other words, there's two different types of sins. There's sin and there's practice, practice, or practicer of sin. So when you practice it, so let's say if I hit my hammer at, job, at the job, right? Bam! I hit my, and I, I drop an F-bomb or whatever, you know? And I'm, Lord, forgive me, I repent. But, Somebody that's over here, oh yeah, this F and then yeah, them F and this and F and this and F and F. Nothing but F out of his mouth. This guy mastered that. You know? So that's what God doesn't want. He wants you to try. As long as you're trying. I'm not saying you gotta be perfect, but we have to make an effort and try to walk holy. It's very important. And you see God's blessing and flowing through you. Amen? Amen. All right, so we're going to go to Matthew 13, 30. And the word of God says, Let both grow together until the harvest. And in time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn. To burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Amen? And that's crazy that he says, bind them and burn them. Because that was, that's what happened to the demons, you know what I mean? <laughs> I enjoy that because it's, it's a blessing to see somebody set free when, when they've been in bondage. And um, God's here to set us all free. Amen. Matthew 25, 31 to 32 then says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Not everyone gets saved. Not everyone believes. Not everyone, not everyone obeys his commandments. There are some that are going to go to hell. God is all knowing. He gave us his word. For us to understand. He gave us these scriptures. For us to understand that. Not everybody. He's going to separate some. You know. And I don't want to be that one. That's going to be in the in the lake of fire. Or in, uh, in hell. I'm not going to risk my life. For that. I'm not going to risk my salvation. If you want to go deeper. My, my salvation depends on my family's salvation. Because if you're not really saved. Then, are, is your family going to be saved? Because the scripture said, once he saves you, then they'll go down to your family. So, man of God, I encourage you, take this serious. Because this is not a game. Man. We got to stop playing. We make the choices in our mind. We choose the easy way out in times of trouble. We need to stop playing. We are born into sin in a sinful world where our culture and ancestors been hit and shaped by Satan. Yes. The internet and TV programs pro programs us to be somewhat evil and sinful, but they make it seem good and successful. It's fun and everyone is doing it and why not do it? It's cool. Everything evil is cool. It's cool now. And if we don't, they bully us or clown us or think we dumb or weak because we don't drink, party, etc. I mean, the world's going to put you down because you're trying to do the right thing because the world is already demonized. The, 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 the Satan's already got a hold of the world. When I say the world, the world is the one that's influencing you to drink, to party, to kill, to, to treat women like bees, to, to, to be disrespectful, be disobedient, be in chaos. This is what Satan wants. This is his work. This is what he, this, he's the prince of the air. This is what he does. He's in the air 
airwaves. He's in the phones. He's in everywhere. Oh, Sometimes you, you, man of God, I know that you, you listen to your word. You search up scriptures. And I guarantee you that one of those days when you're looking for a scripture, the other day I was looking, I was looking, I, I always look for scriptures or stuff like that on, on my phone, on YouTube. And the other day I was looking for a, a, a something, how to do a mechanical work. I forgot what it was. And uh, when I looked it up, guess what? It was some girls in bikini doing mechanic work. <laughs> I was like, what a lie of the devil. I, I, I switched it real quick. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, like this guy is like, you know, trying, like really hard. He tried really hard, you know? So, so I'm telling you, things will, will tempt you. He will tempt you in your own phone. Your phone can be holy and holy and you've never searched up anything like that, but it will pop up. It will pop up. Alright? Because that's what he does. That's what he does. He's trying to control our mind. He's trying to take over our mind. And we have to understand that. That we have an enemy that's trying to drag us to hell. And he's not going to stop until you take your last breath. And when you take your first breath, you're going to be either in front of the Lord, down on your knees, and he's going to judge you, and there's going to be nobody there to respond but only you. Every person here, you're responsible for your own salvation. That's right. Yeah. You're responsible. We have to understand that. I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5 8, and it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, Walks, up, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Us, church, the enemy is here to steal your joy, your peace, your love, to destroy your health, your marriage, your faith, even your faith, he'll try to destroy. A lot of us lose faith because the enemy comes. He is out to kill us, but God came to give us life and life more abundantly. He has prepared a mansion for us. He protects us. And there are so many promises to us. How many of us trust that? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Or if one's saved, then your household will be saved. But are we really saved? Do we really discern or have these promises? The way we live. Acknowledge yourself. Have we forgave everyone? Because some of us walk around with bitterness. Because some of us can't forgive somebody because of what they did to us or whatever. A lot of us had trauma. A lot of us, I mean, I, I was raised in a dysfunctional, dysfunctional family. There was one day where I was, what, 15? And there was my, my oldest brother, rest in peace, was trying to stab me with a knife. And my other brother, older brother, jumped in. And my, my sister jumped in swinging, and uh, my mom was in the fight, and, and there was a baseball bat, and it was a small little living room, and we're all fighting like a royal rumble, everybody swinging at everybody, and the fish breaks, and I just remember the fish is flapping in the floor, and I'm like slipping and sliding, but you know what? That type of stuff can do something to your mind, or maybe be raped as a child, or maybe, or maybe somebody put fear in you and, and, and uh, bullied you or, or, or accused you or, or condemned you. Where do you think that stuff come from? That's all Satan. That's all his work. Because God's a loving God. He loves us. He wants to bless us. But you know what? There is going to be struggle. There is going to be trials. But when you have God and you're a new creation in Christ, is different than when you don't have one. Because when you have God with you now, now God can give you the strength to overcome these things. Now you understand that He is in control. He is in control. Not us. We can't change our situations, but we can change the way we think. I'm not going to get bitter over that. Lord, I know you love them. I know you made them. And I'm going to love them no matter what, Lord. And guess what? That's not burning me up. It's like it's like it's like healing, man. It's like it's such a blessing to give it to God. A lot of us say we give it to God, but do we really give it to God? You know what I'm saying? Because 
it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust. You know, but uh, here we go. Matthew 6, 14, 15. For if, you, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Like we truly forgave those that hurt us, lied to us, against us, disappoint us, betrayed us, abandoned us, reject us. Look around. Maybe we have hate towards someone here in your home, at work, or on social media. You know how they do on social media? They be shooting their darts. And they, they don't say it's for you, but they but you know it's for you. You know? Uh, we have to for, we have to forgive and to love. We have to. Because if not, we're not gonna make it. This scripture here is saying, if you don't forgive others, he won't forgive you. So what makes you think you're going to walk into the kingdom if he already said that? If you believe one word, then believe it all. Amen. You can't, we can't have sin. We can't play with God. God is not a game. Come on. You see video games, right? I play video games. I'm going to say my favorite game I played was Contra oh. in Nintendo. I was fighting aliens. And I know a code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, DA, select, start. And I got unlimited lives, right? What if we all want unlimited lives? We good. But guess what? We can't. This life is not a game. I ride my motorcycle, and when I'm on the freeway, every move I make and everything, I'm precautious because my life is in the line. But do you take that precaution in your life and in your walk with God? Because God's not playing with you. He's a just God, and if you don't meet his standards, he ain't gonna let you in. The devil's not playing with you because he is here to kill us and he's not playing games. So if God's not playing and the devil's not playing, then why are we playing? We need to stop. We need to stop, church. We need to stop. And I'm not saying it's gonna happen from one day to another, but like I said in the beginning, Try. Try. I was drinking a 30 pack. Now I drink a 12 pack. Now I drink a, a, a 6 pack, a 3 pack. Guess what? Now I don't drink. Amen. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not saying you gotta be miraculous or uh, uh, change from one day to another because for everybody is not the same. God did it for me. He, he When I called on him, he delivered me from crystal meth. I was on my knees crying like a baby, and he delivered me. You know? It's been since 2005 to this day, and I never went back. You know, by the grace of God. By the grace of God. You know, he's so good. But I'm going to go ahead and continue because I got a lot, and I don't know if I got enough time. Um, so, Matthew 5 27 28, he says, You have heard that it, that it was said to those of old. You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And I think I skipped one scripture. Um, John, 1 John 3.15 Whosoever hath his brother, his brother is a whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And he know that no murder hath entered life abiding in him. In other words, he's saying straight up, if you look at a woman with, with, with uh, lust, you've already committed adultery. If you look at somebody with hate, you've already murdered them. And he exactly said, you won't inherit, you won't walk in. So we have to control our minds. Yeah, you're gonna get mad and you're gonna start Feel the hate come and everything, but you gotta rebuke it. You gotta renounce it. If it's too hard for you to do, you gotta be set free. If, if it's lust, if you're looking at when you can't control your eyes, I was that guy. I mean, I, I know that mostly all the men here. I mean, I know that we love women, and we had it just like the hamburger. You had it, you taste it. Now you want it, you desire it. Well, it's the same thing. Women, the same thing. You see it and you desire it. Why? Because it's in your flesh. 
but you already know what to do. You know how to renounce those thoughts. The thing is here, if you renounce the thought, when the, I tell people to practice five R's. These are my five R's, right? So the first R, you recognize the enemy. Oh, I recognize that woman's coming over here halfway naked, walking down the street, right? I recognize the enemy. Second R, I resist the devil and he will flee, right? I gotta resist that and not look at her like that. Third R is I renounce. So I renounce that thought because the thought comes to my mind and it's gonna go to my heart. And if I allow it, it got 30 seconds before it goes to the heart. And if it goes to the heart, then it's gonna create this baby of lust. It's gonna create this little demon. And it's gonna start growing and growing and growing until you can't even control yourself. Until you're walking everywhere, just your, your radar is just looking for women and you know what I, you know what I mean. But that's what it's gonna do. It's just gonna be like your radar is gonna be open to that because of that. And some of us have that that we can't control. But I'm here to let you know that God can set you free. Amen. God can set you free. And you really surrender. And you really surrender. He can set you free from all of those things. Because he wouldn't say it in his word if, 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 if it was going to be that hard for us to do. He wouldn't say you can do all, through, all things through Christ who strengthens me if it wasn't true. He wouldn't say that. He said it because he knows that we can do it. And we can walk holy. We can walk in love. We can love one another as Christ loved the church. We can, we can grow in the spirit. We can do it. We don't have to talk about people. We can talk about people, uplift them. Oh man, I'm, I'm glad about Brother Marcos. He's doing so great, you know? He's doing good, man. He's growing fast. And, and I really mean that, brother. I really mean that. He's growing so fast, you know? And uh, there's a lot of us that, 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 um, that are getting closer to God and drawing near. I know Albert is. I know we're drawing near, you know? We're getting closer. I hear the, the words that come out of your mouth. And I heard you getting closer to God because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know? And I feel it. I know it. I know it. It's all God. It's all God. And, and we need Him. We need Him because we're living in, in, in the end of days. And, um, you know, like Brother prayed for Israel and, and praise God, man. We have to pray. I pray. I pray that people get saved because there's going to be wars, right? There's, that's what the Lord said. He's going to come back and there's going to be wars, rumors, or roars, and, and all that's going to happen. But we have to focus. We have to go and fight spiritually. Yeah. We have to come against those demons. Uh, uh, I'm going to make a quick example. Uh, I pray that, that, that those people get saved, that, that those demons come out of them, those demons of, 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 of uh, violence, of anger, of rage, of destruction. Uh, come out of those people, the Hamas or, or whoever decapitated people. I pray that those demons come out of them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you that you touch them, that you save those people, that they will be transformed, that you would shine your light just like Jesus did to Paul and let them fall back and be blinded by the light and get surrender to the Lord. I pray that they get saved and I pray that, 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 that it starts doing something because when the Lord comes back, He's going to take us, right? But if they're in the middle of war and they give their life to the Lord, then God has chosen them. Amen. We don't have to give up on our loved ones. We don't have to give up on our neighbors, on our friends. No, keep praying. You'll see the miracle. And if we don't see it, you know what? God is all knowing and he knows what's best. His ways are not our ways. And sometimes it hurts us when he, when he takes somebody, somebody that, that we love. Dearly. And that can shake your faith or it can make you great. And that's what counts. What are you going to do in the storm? Are you going to fall back or are you going to go forward and go to war? Because this is a war. Yeah, there's a war in the world, but there's a spiritual war that happens before all of this. And when we're in prayer, we're praying for people. We're praying for wars. We're praying for the president. We're praying for the churches. We're praying for the division. You know, we're praying these things. God can move. You make a change. We need all of you. We all need to pray. We all need to pray. I don't, I don't take prayer lightly. No. You're, you're stepping into the kingdom of God, to the third heaven, and, 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 and making your petition in front of the Lord. And, and you're covered by his righteousness or else he won't even make it. If you're covered by his righteousness, if he knows that you're trying your best, 
He will hear you. Amen. 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 All right. And then it says, um, in the law, in the law time, back in the in the days, people were stoned to death for sin. Before it was it was too hard to keep the commandments. But God's mercy, his grace, and unconditional love send a savior to rescue us. John 1 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our example. He, he was humble. He loved his enemies. Washed Judas' feet, knowing he was going to betray him. He healed the sick, cast out demons, and raised the dead. He was baptized and laid his life for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through Him. Amen. By faith, by belief, by obedience, by grace. But yet we struggle with sin and some of us just practice it. We are so hard-headed or hard-hearted hard or hard-headed. We, we, don't, we don't care. We don't even feel conviction. We practice it. How 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 to, how to us we practice we practice how to lie so good we believe our lies we practice how to use any drug or addiction to to a limit or when nobody knows or practice how to sleep around and ask for forgiveness because he is faithful and and we take advantage of his grace. He knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We need to repent and turn away from our wicked ways. Who are we fooling? God is not mocked. We need to stop playing and get right. We can't be thinking that we can mock God and get away with it. Satan ain't playing. He's after our soul and our flesh. He's trying to take us out. God ain't playing. He's a righteous and just God. His word is true, and, and we have to obey and live it. We can't play with our salvation. Amen. You're playing with your salvation. I'm playing with my salvation. If I don't take this serious, we can't play with it. It's eternity. Is eternity in hell or is eternity in heaven? I don't think I don't think anybody here wants to take that risk. But we go about our life and we forget. Yeah. And we forget about that. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but that, but he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in, in thy name have cast out devils and, and in thy name done many wonderful works and and then will and and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity yeah, there's a difference there's a difference church between sin and between practicing sin yeah. I'm going to make one example real quick so I've been to jail a lot of times but if you know anything about jail, there's a judge, right? And that judge has the authority to put you up for a long time. Yeah. Or a little bit. But what matters is what happened. He has to be a just judge, right? So if you want to rob a bank and you and you and you panic. And you say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through here, here. You got to take out the security. Just kill them so we won't have to deal with it. And then you're going to go here, 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 and that, and that. Right? And then you do it, right? Okay? If there's another one that he's just in there, and he's like, you know what? I got a gun. Life is bad for me. You know what? I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go for it. Boom. And he goes for it and tries to take. There's a difference between the man that planned and the man that just did it, it just happened, or he just reacted, or he just, you know, uh, out of self-defense or anything like that, self-defense and somebody kills somebody, you know? 
it, it, it's a big difference because the guy that planned it gets more time. Yep. He gets more time because he planned it. And that's what it's saying. The scripture is saying. If you're practicing, now you're planning it. Because you knew you was, when you got in that car and you were driving out to wherever you were going to go, do your sin or do your thing, you knew what you were doing. You're practicing. Or you drive by the house, stop at the liquor store or, or somewhere, delete all these messages. Boom, 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 boom. Delete all this. Because the person's cheating, right? So he's got to delete, delete, and then he goes home and all. Hallelujah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, how you doing, wife? We're good. Right? 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 Because we lie. Come on, God. Lie is a sin. Yes. We can't lie. Yes. We have to stop lying. Yes. It's very important. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yes. We have to be serious about the things of God. There's, there's a lot of things that we have to learn. Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. A new heart also I will give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you and, and cause you to walk in my status, and ye shall keep my judgment, my commandments, and do them. Amen. Amen. When when we are born again. We are a new creation. We have to learn how to walk, how to talk. Even, even we have to unlearn some things. Yeah. Or should I say some sin practices? Yeah. We have to unlearn. Yeah. So God's Holy Spirit helps us. Yeah. When He convicts us to, to not do evil and keep His commandments. He is the helper and the comforter, right? You feel it sometimes. I mean, if your heart is, is, is already stoned, sometimes you don't even feel it no more. It's like callus in your hand. You don't even feel You grab a hammer, you don't feel that you, you work hard. Your hands, you don't feel nothing because you've been working, you practice. You know, but sometimes people, their heart is so hard already that they don't even feel conviction. They think that, that it's okay, you know, to sin and whatever. And the Holy Spirit is not, is not, uh, Convicting them because they you choose. We choose our own ways. We have a free will. Right? John 14, 16, 18. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Jesus ascended into heaven, but he but sends us the Holy Spirit Amen. to help us get to heaven and help others. Right? Amen. So so he helps us, but he helps a lot of other people. Like we have to help a lot of people through his spirit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Mark 16, 17, 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Are we truly believers? He has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. In us, the same spirit that was with him, Jesus, got baptized and, and fasted, walked in the wilderness, and was tempted by the devil 40 days. But Jesus Almighty gave us the example to fight with Scripture. Amen? Amen. What did he do? He shot bang, bang. It is written, right? He was the devil trying to shoot him. He was like, bang, bang. It's written. Get off of me. And that's what you got to do. You got to fight for yours. Amen. You ain't going to let the devil punk. You're going to let them get the best out of you? You're going to let them get the best out of your family, out of your children, out of your loved ones? We have to, family. We have to. We can't surrender. We ain't, man, we weren't weak in the world, but we're going to be weak when we're Christians. See, that's the, that's the problem. People look 
at Christians like we're weak, but we're actually more bold than them. We're actually more stronger than them because we have put aside the world and submit to God. That's the truth. John 14, 15, 18. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive. Let me repeat that again. Because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you, will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Do we really love him? Do we obey his commandments? These are the commandments that, that fulfill the law that covers a multitude of sin, right? And I'm going to read those to you. Because Jesus came to fulfill the law. Because there's a lot of people getting stoned. And I don't mean stoned smoking. I mean stoned to death. Amen? And it's crazy. But Jesus came by his mercy, by his grace, and came to, to, for us to be able to be saved. And in Matthew 22, 36 through 40 says, Teacher, which is, this, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Right? And let me stop right there. Do we really love him with everything we got? <laughs> because we come to church or we go to the Super Bowl and we scream loud for the game. Or we get more crazy and radical for the game. Or what about what about if we're watching the game in the in the parking lot, and or, or or even in church, sitting in church watching the game? Like, how do you think God feels? These football these football teams and everything they're great, but it has its place. It has its place. There's time for everything, but you have to give God your best. Amen. And you don't half step in here. We got to give them all. We got to give them all. We got to stop playing, church. We got to stop playing. Amen? The next one says, and the second one is, is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, and all the law of, and, the, and the prophets. So that's what it is. We need to stop playing and we have to understand that we have to love one another. It's hard. It's hard. I'm going to be honest with you. Some people get on my nerves. Some people do. But I pray for them and I pray for them and I pray for them. And I believe that God's going to change them. I don't treat them bad. I treat them with love. But I know that the enemy tries to, tries to stir me up. To start getting, getting like bitter or hate towards that person. But I don't allow it. I shut them down real quick. And we all have to shut them down. We can't allow that. You can't, if you allow that, you're walking into your own cell. You're walking into your own prison. You want to be a prisoner of bitterness, of, of, of all these things, of lust, of perversion, of hate, of anger, of, of, of rejection, abandonment, all these things that, that have built strongholds in your mind. We have to understand for the weapons of our warfare are not part of a mighty and God for the pulling down strongholds. Pulling down everything that exalts itself over the knowledge of God. So God gave you a knowledge, right? But these strongholds, uh, let's say of uh, bitterness. I start getting bitter and I start thinking in my mind, oh man, I can't stand them. I can't stay building a wall. I can't stand them and it's just this, 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 this. And it's building all this wall. Oh, and then I'm starting to grow some hate and envy and jealousy and, 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 and towards these people. And you're building all these walls in your mind when the word of God says you got to pull down those strongholds. You got to pull them down and don't allow it to exalt itself over the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of God is pure. It's holy. Is love. And that's what we are. We are his children. We are his people. And we're supposed to love with that same love. Yeah. We're not supposed to be against each other or gossip or hate each other. We're supposed to try to uplift each 
each other. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians. Love suffers long and is kind. Love not love does not envy. Love does not uh, parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believe, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. If we have the love of God, for God and for others, we have nothing. Any, we have nothing. If we, if we have no love for God and for others, we have nothing. Anything you do is in vain. Anything you can go feed the homeless. You can give me a million dollars. If you don't love me, it's nothing. If you can go minister to anybody you want, if, if it ain't if, if it ain't love in it, it's nothing. I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, when I do ministry to people and, I, and I'm casting out demons, I love that person. And I do it out of place of love because it concerns me uh, somebody being in torment and I know the freedom that God can give you. And I'm like, man, I'm going to fight for this person. I don't care if it takes me 10 hours. I'm going to fight for that person. That's love. But if I do it, you know what? I'm going to do this real quick. It better happen quick. Because I gotta go, you know what? The demons know. Yes. And they'll be like, oh, we're gonna put up with this dude because he wants to leave. He has to go to work tomorrow. One time, I didn't stop until 3 in the morning, and I had to get up at 4 in the morning. And you know what? To God be the glory. Because you know what? It doesn't matter what these things think, but there's freedom in the house of God. Yes. And you have to want it. You have to be desperate for it. Amen? Yes. He will give it to you. Yes. So I still don't have to say this. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to absorb all things, and I will be with you to the end of age. Yeah. Right? right? So check this out. May we be able to understand, we, we may be able to understand a God who would forgive sinners, who comes to him for mercy, but a God who tenderly searches for sinners and then joyfully forgives them must possess an extraordinary love. This is the kind of love that prompt Jesus to come to earth to search for the lost people and save them, for the lost people and save them. This is the kind of extraordinary love that God has for us. If you feel far from God, don't lose hope. He is searching for you, knocking at your door. It's up to us to let him in. It's up to us to repent and turn away from our sin, to obey his commandments, to surrender, surrender it all and stop playing. Stop playing with God. Eternity is not a game or a risk. We want to take, remember, we, it's not a risk that we want to take. We want to remember salvation is not only for us. When we are obedient and truly saved, our house will also be saved. Yes. All his promises apply, but we have to stop playing and surrender to God. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. I played with God a lot. I wasn't ready. And I ran from Him. And I was like, you know what? I knew about God. And I knew that if I if I was going to get killed, and before I die, I say, Lord, forgive me. I was going to make it. That's, that was my thoughts. But you know what? I know that was a lie that the devil put in my mind so I could live my life in destruction. So I could live my life taking advantage of his grace knowing that there is a God in heaven that has saved me but you know what I wanted to keep, keep sinning I wanted to keep drinking I wanted to keep getting high I wanted to keep sleeping around I wanted to keep selling drugs I wanted to keep doing 
these evil things, stealing cards and all that stuff that I was in the world doing. But you know what? God delivered me. He delivered me. I was desperate. I was desperate. I was desperate. I came to the understanding where I had enough of everything. Enough. I was so tired of it. And the Holy Spirit knocked on my door. And I unlocked the door. I'm smoking meth and doing all my drugs. And I said, come in. I don't care. I thought it was the devil. And nobody came in. So I searched the whole house. And I came back in the room. Nobody was in the house. It was New Year's Eve. My family was gone with family. And when I came back in the room, I started being convicted by the Holy Spirit so bad that my eyes were open. And I started seeing my mom cry, my little brother cry desperately. I started seeing um, the neighbors coughing because I used to blow out the smoke of meth out of my window. And there would be kids playing out there. And I cared this. I didn't care about those kids. I was doing my sin. And the Lord showed me the hurt that I was doing. All my homeboys and, and homegirls that I got hooked on drugs. I started seeing their family suffering and their suffering. All the women I was pimping. I started seeing their hurt and their, their feelings. I started seeing everything that I was causing. And at that moment, I wanted to kill myself. And I got on my knees and I, and, 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 and I grabbed a knife and I was going to cut my veins. And at that moment, I remembered if I cut my veins, I go to hell. If you take your life, you can't take your life. It's not yours. It belongs to God. It belongs to God. It's not yours for you to contaminate it or overeat or, or get tattoos all over your body. It's not yours. It's God's. He loves you. You have to take care of his temple. We have to take care of how we eat. We have to take care of how we love. Because he wants to use us for a long run. He wants to use you for a long time. He wants to use you for a long time. At that moment, I said, Jesus, please, stop me from using this drug. And I started feeling the Holy Spirit for the first time. And I couldn't stop crying. And I was shaking. And I was shaking. And I could hear a voice telling me on the side of my ear, telling me, don't ask him, don't ask him. He's going to stop you. I was like, Lord, stop me from using this drug. And I could hear the devil. But it was my voice. It was my own voice saying, don't stop him. I mean, saying, don't ask him. He's going to stop you. How long did my own voice trick me into doing evil? How long did it tell me go steal that car? And I didn't know it was me. I didn't know it wasn't me. I didn't know that it was something else. How long? There are imposters in your mind. It's a lot. We call it the devil. You know? But there's demons that are trying to destroy us. And I encourage you, church, surrender to God. Call on God and he can set us free. You have to be desperate and ask them, Lord, I need freedom. There's a lot of people that do deliverance. We do deliverance in this church, but there's a lot of people. If, if you don't want to be uh, be delivered by me or my wife or, or somebody else here, there's there's other, other ways you can be set free, but just do it. Yeah. Just do it. I'm telling you, there's a freedom. He who the Son says free is free indeed, amen? There is a freedom. There is a freedom, and if today, you heard something because we spoke about what Jesus said to do and we spoke about what he did the examples he gave he got baptized he healed the sick, he raised the dead he cast out demons he loved his enemies he fought with the scripture then you met Jesus today you met him you met him today so there is no excuse for you to say I didn't know we know, we heard the word, and the Holy Spirit is right there with you, tugging at your heart. He's tugging at your heart because he knows we all need work to do. We all need work to do. I need work to do. I need a lot of work. I probably need more work than all of you guys, you know? But I humble myself 
and I cry out to the Lord and I try every day, every day to do better in his eyes. And that's what we gotta do, church. That's what we gotta do. Today, if you wanna stand with me, please. Those that can, if you can, it's okay, you can sit. And today I wanna invite you. If this is your, your if you've never heard the gospel, or if you never surrender your life to the Lord to get saved, it's real simple. It's real simple. You heard who Jesus is. You heard what he wants from us. And you know what he wants us to do. So if you want to receive the Lord as your Savior, all you have to do is ask him to forgive you for your sins. All you have to do, truly repent. Ask Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because His Word says to ask and He will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is God, that He died and He rose in the third day, and that He is your Lord and Savior. And ask Him to guide you for the rest of your life. I'm not saying that, that, that that's all to it. But that's the, that's the beginning. That's you taking a step of faith. Because you have to still line up and have a life of obedience in that narrow road. It's not just, okay, well, if that's my ticket, then I'm just going to go get saved and I'm about to go do my own thing later on. No, it doesn't work like that. Remember, he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. He knows what you're going to do before you did it. He knows everybody's plan right here and around the world before we even did it. At the same time, there is no other God. There is no other God. God is almighty. He's in control of everything. Of all of our hearts. And he wants us to grow, to serve Him, to be saved, delivered, set free, and walk holy. So if you've never been saved before, I want you to come up. I want you guys to start coming up to the altar and give your life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody else that never received the Lord? That's never did this prayer? And I'm going to pray with them first. And then we're going to call everybody else because I know we all need, all right? I want you guys to repeat this prayer with me. I want you to say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. He is my Savior. I know you died and you rose in the third day. You are my Lord and Savior, Lord. Forgive me for all of my sins. For my ancestors' sins, knowingly and unknowingly, everything we did against you, forgive us, Lord. You paid for it in the cross. Cover me with your righteousness. Make me a new creation. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. In my mind, body, and soul, in my emotions, and that you will help me, Holy Spirit, through my trials and tribulations, and that you will comfort me in my troubles and lead me for the rest of my life till I meet you in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Give these guys a clap. Because you know what? This is very important. This is very important. You confess it out of your mouth. You said it out of your mouth. And God hears you. He heard your voice. He heard your thoughts. Alright? So at this moment, I want to invite everybody else that needs prayer for anything. We all have struggles. We all go through things. Don't hold back. If you hold back, you ain't going to get the blessing. You want to hold back and stay in your seat? 
You're not going to get that breakthrough. We want to pray for you. There's no limit to God what, what God can do. He can make it happen. He does the miraculous. He is everywhere. He is the Almighty. But if there's any need, if there's anything that you're going through, I want you to say it in this altar. I want you to speak it out. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out and just say it. I don't care what it is. Lord, forgive me if I'm watching pornography. Forgive me if this. Don't care who's next to you. Don't care who's, who's watching. You want your freedom or not? Because God's going to set you free right now. He's going to set you free from all those things. Some of us believe in astrology or, or, or in uh, little wristbands, red wristbands, one eye wristbands, or, or all these demonic things that they have. Dream catchers or whatever. We carry this stuff thinking, oh yeah, all oh, it's cool. The dream catchers look cool. Yeah, I used to have them. But you know what? It's a portal for demons to come in you. It doesn't stop evil. It brings it in. Crystals. Crystals are evil. Harry Potter. Harry Potter has witchcraft in it. Man, we've been so blind. We've been lied to. We've been fooled by the devil. Bring it to the altar. Then God set you free from those things. And he will give you discernment so that you can notice what is not of God. What do I need to get rid of out of my house? What do I got to get out of my house? Because that object in my house, every time I get set free, I come home and guess what? Another demon trying to come in. And another, why? Because that object's still there. Because the crystals are still there. Because that, that book is still there. Because the all seen eye is still there. We have to get rid of these things, church. Let God cleanse us. Let Him wash us. Surrender it all right now. Surrender it all right now. We're going to pray right now. And if the leaders can come and start laying hands on people, anybody that's led, if you feel led, if you feel led like praying for somebody, any brother, any sister, if you feel led, just walk up and come and start laying hands on people. We're going to believe in God for his healing hand, for his deliverance, for his freedom, for his salvation. We're going to believe in God. We are believers. We're not playing. Our salvation is on the line. And we can't play with God. That's it. We can't play with the devil no more. Hey, I ain't messing with you, dude. You know what I mean? We got to get to that point. And you know what? We're done with you. We're done with Satan. We're done with him. Let's go before our Father. I'm going to pray for you guys right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father God, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity. Look at your people, Father God, that has came up forward, Father God, desperate, Father God, for their salvation, desperate, Father God, for freedom, for their deliverance, Father God, desperate, Father God, for healing, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would, that you would honor it, Father God, and that you would bring freedom, Father God, that you would set the captives free, Father God. Break every chain, Father God. I break every witchcraft, sorcery, spell, hex, incantation, voodoo, santeria, pharmacia. I can't do it, dismantle every assignment, every contract, every oath, and every ritual that has been placed against these people. I break it in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. Only you can do this, Father God. I pray you break them, Father God. Break every stronghold, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus.
maintain out in the name of Jesus. You get out of here in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of rejection, of abandonment, of, 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 of loneliness, of, of, of every spirit, get out now in the name of Jesus. Get out now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. That spirit of fear, you have no place here. Because the Bible says, God didn't give me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Oh, you can lay hands on the hands on Get out now in the name of Jesus. We command fear to come up and out and go straight to the abyss. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. God didn't give us that spirit of fear. He gave us a sound mind. I command that spirit of octopus to disconnect out of your head and go straight to the abyss right now in Jesus' name. I command that spirit of python to unwrap yourself off of these people and go straight to the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus. I command that spirit of addiction, of drugs, of, of any unholy addiction, of sexual immorality to come up and out and go straight to the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus. Get out now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit leave now. We are God's people and we will serve the Lord. We are God's people and we will serve the Lord. Now have your way, Holy Spirit. Turn on the lights in every dark room, in every house in the, that has come up. Turn on the lights in every dark place and expose darkness and cast them all out. Holy Spirit, have your way.
with you. He does not want you to fix the things in this world. Amen. Because we cannot do it. Amen. Only through Him we can give life. Amen. And life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. It was a powerful message this morning. Amen. Take it and run with it. Amen. Apply it to your lives. And, and see, there's more than God wants to do than just what happened here. Amen. So this morning as we close in prayer, amen, I want to encourage you guys, come back Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning, be encouraged, you know, be encouraged by the fellowship, be encouraged, you know, through your word, amen, through prayer, amen. So why don't we close in the word of prayer, amen. Father, we thank you. We know, God, that we cannot thank you enough, God, for what you've done in our lives, God. We know that what you have started, God, you're going to finish, Lord, in our lives, Lord. We know that what's taking place here this morning, God, you have appointed this time to be, Father, where your people were touched by you, the Master's hand. And we know, God, this morning, God, that you, Father God, will come quickly, Lord. And that we need to be ready, God. And we need to be, Father God, more into our word and more into prayer, God. That we may be able to overcome the things that come our way, Lord God. Father, through you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, for families this morning, God. I pray for traveling mercy upon your people. Leave here to say, God, bring blessings upon homes this morning. Bring a great revival in this nation, God, that we need, Lord God. Touch the lives of those who are not saved out there, God. Father, move this morning, God. Continue, God, throughout this day, God. Father, in the church of God, said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Amen. You guys are, are dismissed. Amen. We have a uh, Another fundraiser for the worship night. We're trying to raise some money to pay our our guests. They're going to be speaking and uh, singing that night. So we have a fundraiser in the back. Uh, come and be a part of that. If you can, that's okay. Amen. If you want to leave an IOU, we take IOUs. If you want to leave a Zal or send us out, send us out. But put it under worship night. If you're going to Zal something. But uh, we want to encourage you to be a part of this. Amen. And it really helps. Amen. Praise God. Thank you.